So um, I, uh, what I what I love about the parables of Jesus, and I hope to be able to do today, is um, that I think there's learning for us whether we're the oldest in the room or the youngest, whether you're at school or whether you're in employment or staying at home or whatever, whatever stage of life, whatever position you hold. Um, I think this story that Jesus tells, I think all of his stories and this one this morning um, is helpful and challenging um, for all of us. I'm struck this week by the reason why, why Jesus told this story. Sometimes we, we rush to verse 3, which tells us the story, these three stories that Jesus told, the parable of the lost sheep, of the lost coin, and the lost son. And, um, but the reason why Jesus told it is because he had, was gathering with people who didn't have the best reputation, who people didn't like, who people didn't think deserved to be in Jesus' company. And, and I just wonder, if you're being really honest with yourselves this morning, don't worry, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. Your hand. I wonder if there's people like that in your community or in your neighborhood, your estate, in your school, in your classroom, in the workplace, that maybe you are a wee bit like the, the Pharisees at times. You're grumbling because of their behavior. You're grumbling because of the way they live their lives. You're grumbling because of their attitude. You're grumbling because you've forgotten that they are made in his image. You no longer see them as image bearers. You've forgotten that the one thing that you can agree on with with God is that they were worth Jesus giving his life for. And so in the context of um, Jesus identifying people who are complaining about the attitude and the behavior of others, Jesus tells this story. Um, And so there's a few points that I want to make because this... If this is good news, it is good news for everybody. It is good news if you are lost. It is good news if you are, no matter where you find yourself, if you're a tax collector, if you're one of poor reputation, if, you're the, if you think of yourself as the worst of the worst, if you think of somebody in your community as the worst of the worst, this is good news for people who, have, who are lost. One of the things that I would want to challenge all of us with whether it's thinking about a school friend or a work colleague or a neighbor, is that it is, it is wrong, it is actually unfair, I think, to make assumptions about people who don't know Jesus. The, the, Pharise- the, the religious people, the, the Pharisees, the scribes, they were grumbling because they had made assumptions about people that they didn't know. They made assumptions that I, think are, that I think are wrong and I think that are, are unfair about people who don't know Jesus. And so I would want to be challenging all of us today. And maybe you're not used to that, kids, but whether you're, in, whether you're in P1 or whether you're 30 years in your job, we all can be guilty of making wrong and unfair assumptions about people who are different than us, about people whose behaviors and practices are different than ours. So I would want to be challenging us all about that. Be thinking about unfair assumptions that we make about people who don't know Jesus. And I would want to be almost, I don't know who you identify with in this story. Whether you identify with the religious people, I don't think, uh, unless you're super honest. um, I don't know if if there's many of us would identify with the Pharisees and the scribes. Maybe some of you will... uh, um, Maybe some will identify with the shepherd that goes out to try and find the lost sheep. Maybe some of you will identify with the sheep who finds themselves wandering. But I find myself almost in defense of the sheep this morning, rightly or wrongly. Um, And I want to suggest that the sheep do not get lost on purpose. I don't think the sheep get lost on purpose. I think the people that we come into contact with again repeat myself neighbors colleagues school friends for lots of people they are a victim of the pressure or the pace of life or they are maybe the victim of circumstances let me let me read a couple of points that caught my attention that hadn't really caught my attention before 
This is Jesus speaking to this crowd of people. And he says, which one of you, having a hundred sheep, lose, lose one? And then whenever we go to the story of the woman who lost the coin, it says, um, the woman having ten silver coins, she loses one of them. So Jesus is making this point, I think, I wonder. He's saying the shepherd is the one who is responsible. He has lost the sheep. The woman is, is, is responsible for the ten coins, but she has lost one of them. And so I want to suggest, as we think about those people in our lives, that we maybe make wrong or unfair assumptions about. I want to say that I don't think that they get lost on purpose. And I also would want to say that sheep get lost um, through the carelessness of someone else. Sheep can get lost through the carelessness of someone else. And I wonder, is that what Jesus is doing here? He's pointing out that you haven't lost one. To the woman, you haven't lost one of the coins. And I think I've been struck by this because of um, I constantly on this uh, always feel like I'm relearning. I have a moment where I've learned something and then I find myself coming back around to it again. And I was talking to people during the week that I had to remind myself of a course that I was on, um, a six-week course that I did a number of years ago around um, teenagers in, in care. And I... I can't remember anything else about the six weeks apart from the one line that the the lecturer made around how all behaviour makes sense. We react so quickly to the behaviour. We we make unfair assumptions about the behaviour of the sinners um, or whoever is being pointed out here in the story. We come to realise that actually sheep have they've not got lost on purpose and they haven't got They've got lost through the carelessness of someone else. If you'd faced some of the rejection and the trauma that many of our young people in care have faced, you'd think differently before you react. You'd recognize that they have found themselves in the places that they are because of the carelessness of someone else. I would also want to suggest, again, maybe seemingly in defense of the sheep, that it, the sheep didn't know it was lost. The sheep didn't know it was lost, and so I think the challenge for us, if we are to put ourselves in that position of someone who is looking out for those who have found themselves in a position of being lost or being cast out, being rejected, being isolated, that we would be, be really careful how we communicate. That our gospel, that our message would not be one of morality, but it would be one of grace. Because oftentimes we come across um, sheep that don't even know they're lost. And our message is one, I think at times, can be one of, of condemnation and shame. And I think we just need to be really careful about how we communicate to people who don't maybe even realize they're lost. I think it, it is... It is on us again, wherever we find ourselves in our stage of life, that we build friendships. We make, we make relationships because I don't know what you're like whenever you find yourself out in the road, out walking in a place maybe you're unfamiliar with and you're not sure how to find your way to where you're supposed to be. And maybe, I'm, maybe, maybe not everybody's like me, but I find it really difficult to trust a stranger. I'll, I'll almost just keep, I'll almost keep, like letting on. I'll find my way. I'll keep going because I'm not stopping to ask a stranger. It is difficult, I think, to trust a stranger when you're lost. People are going to go to who they trust. If the sheep maybe realizes that he is lost, they will go to those that will respond to those who I think will communicate well and to people who they will trust. 
And then finally, again, I think for us all to know and for us all to remember, for something to be considered lost, um, it is because of, because of the value that is placed on the item that has been lost. The sheep was of incredible value to the shepherd. The coin was of incredible value to the woman. The son was of incredible value to the father. And so I think, forget everything else, to begin, so for something to be considered lost is because of the huge value that is placed on that item. And I think if we live like that, I think if that's how we see people, if that's how we respond to people, if that's how we gather around people, that is good news. It's good news for people who are in our neighborhoods or in our schools or in our workplaces. And so let me pray. Father, I thank you for um, the stories that Jesus told. Thank you for the seemingly simple stories that he told, but the depth of meaning and challenge for, for all of us. And so Jesus, I pray that you would help us to see people in the way that you've seen them. God, to, 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 to stand with, to vindicate for, to uh, defend. Yeah, God, I pray that we would, we would find ourselves in the place of building relationships with people in order that they would, they would trust us. And God, that we would offer, that we would offer directions to, to, to bring sons and daughters back home. God, you would give us greater discernment, greater, greater wisdom in how we communicate and lead lost sons and daughters back home. And Father, I thank you that your posture is always one of open arms, open heart, ready to kiss the cheeks of those who will, who will come home. Um, Yes, so God, I pray that you would, wherever we find ourselves, each one of us find ourselves in this, in this journey of life, God, I pray that we would know you with us, pray that we'd know the empowering of your spirit, no matter who we are, no matter what age we are, we find ourselves being empowered by your spirit to live authentic, authentic lives, authentic Jesus-shaped lives. Yes, God, I pray you to encourage each one of us today. God, continue to be so present with us. And bless our, bless our day, bless our week. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Bless you all. We're done. Unless anybody else has anything to sing or contribute, joke to tell. Have a good day, everyone.